Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is a Piracy Show. Now, of course, questions, comments, and concerns from last week's ship updates, but also we're going to, you know, in a little bit just touch on uh, another topic uh, before we really get started on all of that. But first, of course, there's one correction. Uh, Sempi Turnus pointed this out in uh, ship updates, and that is that the speed of the eclipse is still or sorry is supposed to be that of the gladius and not the gladiator it's got gladiator maneuverability but gladius speed now i believe last week's piracy show or the week before that i had been asked do i think that there's going to be like automated defense turrets on ships like sort of like to shoot down incoming ships or something along those lines and i was talking about how basically i felt that that was a given that that was going to happen now, we already knew that NPCs, you could get them to man the turrets on your ship, right? That's a, like that's a known quantity. We know that's going to happen. But on ATV, we actually got this little video here. Now, in this video, you see an actual automated turret and not a man turret, but an automated turret shooting down a fighter or at least shooting at a fighter. And the design of the turret itself is actually pretty smart. It's highly reminiscent of, you know, current systems that we have in the world today. So it kind of, you know, it makes sense that this would e exist in the Star Citizen universe. Now, how does that impact larger ships? We don't know yet. Is this something that's available in, you know, in any capital ship turret slot? Or is this something that's only available to certain capital ships? And what's involved on the back end, you know, maybe there's modules that you have to sit in your like sort of server racks within the ship, you know, different grades, different levels of performance that you can expect out of these things. But it certainly does add another dimension to larger ships like the Javelin. Now, if you're looking at, say, the Javelin or perhaps the Polaris or the Idris as well, it's conceivable that a, a system like this would be deployable on ships like that, but we don't know yet. We don't know what the limitations are. We don't know what the requirements are. We don't know the cost. There's still a lot of things we don't know, but we do know that something like this is going to exist. How, where, how many we can put on, we don't know yet. But it certainly, I think, will maybe allay certain people whose fears who have larger ships like this. And, you know, when we were hearing about you know, the difficulty in shooting down a ship with even the torpedoes on, say, an Eclipse or larger, how many torpedoes it would actually take. It does kind of give these large military capital ships sort of, in my mind, an added dimension of security that before it was kind of like, well, how many torpedoes is it really going to take, right? Now, the obvious question, can I fit one on my civilian ship? we don't know yet and you know there's there's certainly uh, there's certainly people who are very excited about this can it shoot down torpedoes can it only shoot down fighters you know all these questions how what ships can we put something like this on and real realistically i mean what that was was it was a test bed they were testing to make sure that they can make the ai work and that everything was functioning the way they wanted it to function and so it hasn't been like definitely announced for this ship that ship another ship and there are features that sometimes are designed but never implemented um you know that's almost a universal in just about every video game there is so we really don't know yet but i think chances are for you know the larger military ships if it's going to end up anywhere it's probably the safest bet is that is that it's going to end up on the larger military capitals. So other ships, possibly, but to that end, we don't know yet. But I think one of the final questions that you know a lot of people are, are going to ask is, can it shoot down? Could something like this shoot down torpedoes? Possibly, but I don't know that they would implement something like that i i kind of feel that they would but you would really get into this really difficult struggle because you know that's one of the things that i don't like about torpedo systems is that every time you shoot you're spending money every time you pull the trigger 
there's a cash register sound ringing in my head going, okay, there goes 90,000 credits downrange or whatever it's going to be, whatever the price is going to be for those torpedoes. So that is something that always makes me a little bit cautious. And so when I look at ships, you know, certainly the Polaris and whatnot, that has always been one of my, one of the things that I, about the Polaris. In fact, the only thing about the Polaris that I really didn't like is that it was so heavily invested in torpedoes. That was its main armament. And, you know, I look at it from a pirate's point of view where it's about making money and not spending money. And to me, every time you fire a torpedo, you're spending money, right? So, you know, having a system like that that could shoot down torpedoes could possibly create a situation where our torpedoes really that good anyway. And then how good should it be? Should it let some through? How many, you know, of what size? Yada, yada, yada. You can see how this quickly kind of spirals into like an endless debate of, you know, pro you know, protection versus, you know, offense and making torpedo systems worthwhile in the game. And that's the reason why they would exist. Otherwise, you know, why would we have them at all? We would have to remove them if they weren't worthwhile. So you can see how that kind of struggle goes back and forth and how that's, you know, that's kind of, once again, that's why I kind of argued away from torpedo systems and said, you know, having a fire and forget weapon especially one that costs money is not that great of an idea and perhaps m be more reliant on weapons that require you know skill to use like a, a gun or you know any kind of forward firing weapons or something like that something that's more of a skill shot than just a fire and forget weapon something you know that it would be easier to balance a skill shot than it would be to balance a fire and forget weapon which is something that i'd said before and so that is something that you know we're going to see play out now in the star citizen universe if we do get to the point of you know these turrets actually do shoot down torpedoes if they do which we have zero word on once again no information on whatsoever All right, now on to questions, comments, and concerns from ship updates. First one, Citizen Gamer. I'm not saying I bought an Eclipse, but I bought an Eclipse. Can I borrow it sometime? Just, just for a few minutes. All right, next up, Mr. Easter Rabbit. Why the Terrapin exist if you need to be in the right place in the right time with the right skill with almost no time left to send a warning to the fleet? It sounds like it's almost impossible to counter a well done stealth attack. Only counter is to boost an afterburn in an open direction. If we get a torpedo warning, wait, the torpedo has to follow the signature right, so launching chaff and flare could help too. So that I guess that's in reference to when they were talking about uh, could a terrapin in fact detect a um, an eclipse, and you know once again that's you know we get into a situation where it, making the terrapin worthwhile, but also making the eclipse worthwhile, and that struggle back and forth between those two. So I don't know that it's ever going to be quite you know in the right place at the right time. You probably be, probably have to be in the location like of the general area of where that eclipse is but if it's actually skill involved in actually narrowing that ship down and finding its signature rather than you have to be within 5000 meters or you're just never going to see it if it's if it's the first one if it's just a question of you just have to be in the general area and you have to really know your shit to be able to find the eclipse then I'm okay with that if it's if you have to be within 5000 meters that's that's a little worrisome if it gets to that point because then what's the point of the terrapin i mean it, it, even before you would be able to use your skill you'd have to roll the dice and you know when you're talking about a large three dimensional space you know you've got a that's you know you the odds are firmly against you that you're going to be in the right place at the right time to uh intercept an eclipse or even have a chance to detect it before it launches so i think it's going to be more of you have to be in a in a larger generalized area than you know within say x amount of meters of that ship and the counter for the eclipse pilot would be 
you have to be extra skillful in manipulating your ship's signature and maybe uh, turning a few systems on or approaching from a long distance away and just kind of coasting in, you know, with your systems powered down, something like that. So I think as long as it's as long as it's skill versus skill, then I'm okay with it. But when it when you turn into an R RNG lottery, things can quickly get disappointing. All right, next up, Jamal Hassan. Uh, with the upcoming release of Planetside Landing, do you think ships will be able to crash land on a planet and the crew not outright die? Maybe work to repair the ship if possible or send out an SOS if the beacon survives the crash. Great show, by the way. Um, I think that that would be an amazing thing if you could actually do that. If you could crash on a planet and still survive and your ship just didn't auto-detonate. There's certainly a great track record in sci-fi of those kind of epic crash landings. And um, I think people would really enjoy it if that were actually a thing. Especially if you got the full experience, you know, kind of coming down through the atmosphere and then kind of heading in and then hitting the ground. That would be, uh, that would be really cool, especially if the ship survived. That would be awesome. But I think, you know, some people will have some lofty expectations on the physics of, well, you know, when I crashed, this part didn't react quite correctly or that part, you know, blah, blah, blah. But as long as it's, you know, fairly cool, I think it would be pretty awesome. But then once again, it depends on what you hit. I mean, if you hit water and you're going slow enough, would your ship submerge but still be okay? And could you repair it and then fly it up out of the water like Enterprise style and then just fly away or, you know... There, there's so many questions that come along with something like that if you add a system in like that so it's going to be very interesting to see which way they go with it you know i personally i can't wait to see that also you know that people are going to be like acting it out on their twitch stream and stuff like that there's, you're going to see people doing shit like that and that's going to be hilarious so yeah definitely looking forward to that and uh all the knock-on cool shit that should come with it if that is in fact a thing hopefully fingers crossed it will be all right next up peppy tune fire you know what i hate the revolving torpedo 2 bs they just added and because and because i bought one before they did that um he goes on to explain further that you know he wanted to be able to launch all three torpedoes at once so he is revolving uh revolving you know, referring, of course, to this. Now, as Citizen Gamer pointed out in the comments, there's nothing to uh, to say that you can't lock all three torpedoes and then fire each one in sequence. And what the realistic delay between those torpedoes would be. It could be a very short delay or it could be a few seconds. Now, I understand your point of wanting to fire all three at once, you know get all your shots in very quickly and you know once again it's it's a weapon that's meant to surprise its enemies so if it has to kind of give up its signature a little bit to fire its torpedoes it's for that much longer time it's exposed while it's firing its torpedoes that could be a point of concern but also a point of balance against the eclipse and against sneak attacks in general so i can see the value of being able to do it both ways both in terms of like kind of easing back on it just for the you know for the sake of balance but also for the for the eclipse pilot wanting to get you know wanting to get your torpedoes heading down range and get out of there as quickly as possible so i mean it's going to be a it's it's going to be once again it's going to be this difficult point of balance that they're going to have to dance around once these th once these systems you know become fully realized in the universe with cost and all the other odds and ends factored in all right next up cove de gib eclipse no idea why so much hype about it it's it is just another money grab attempt from the developers like we haven't already paid them in advance it would be better for us and for them to actually focus and deliver what we already have paid them for to deliver uh squadron 42 and if they wish to fiddle around with open space game, by all means, please do so. But deliver something usable first, for fuck's sake. Um, stop wasting resources on pointless things and endless changes. 
So Squadron 42 is kind of a nebulous thing right now because, you know, originally we had heard we were going to get it in 2016. That didn't end up happening. Um, and we didn't even get a look-see at it, in fact, really. Um, chances are, I th my personal opinion, what I think is going to happen with Squadron 42, if you're, if you're, because it sounds to me like you're more of a Squadron 42 guy than a Star Citizen guy. Um... Now you have to realize that, you know, when we're backing the game, we're actually backing both, right? So we're backing both the open space game and Squadron 42. But I think Squadron 42, what we're going to get is at some point before the year is out, we're going to get like the first five missions type thing. They're going to give us, you know, a taste of Squadron 42. Um, not a final, eh, probably not a final release version of it either. I d don't think that we're going to see Squadron 42 before 2018. I, I, I would love to be wrong, but I, d I don't see it. Unless they're, they are really so much further ahead than they're letting on. I don't know. You know, I really don't know. But I would expect that we're probably going to get like some kind of a mission pack before the year is out that will give us a taste of what is yet to come. Whether or not it will be a, like a fully final version, who knows. But... You know, I would love to be wrong on this, but I don't think we're going to see a final and finish Squadron 42 this year. All right, next up, Jedi Drifter. I will build a stealth gladiator for half the price, especially if they stick to the brochure, which mentions stealth plus it says the missile bay converts to a cargo box and the turret can do ECM and EW tech. Um, yeah, uh, th that's, you know, once again, what, what, what I was talking about in ship updates was, you know, th if you look at the Retaliator, the Retaliator has so many other options, you know, cargo base, dropship, whatnot, if you can stealth it out to what degree, obviously not to the degree that the Eclipse is stealth, but, you know, to a degree that would be good enough or at least usable then that's a thing and once again the gladiator yeah you can train you can change that into a cargo bay you can carry little torpedoes in there you can carry missiles in there you can do a whole lot more things on a much cheaper and probably a lot easier to repair platform you know once again possibly depending on the cost of these stealth modules and the maintenance cost attached to them but yeah it's just the eclipse is i mean honestly like i have struggled with this thing and apparently it's still available till f you know friday the second of june i have struggled back and forth and i've argued this point with myself back and forth over and over and over again but i just can't justify it i i think it's cool i think for what it's supposed to be once again i've said it a million times but for what it's supposed to be i think it's awesome but it's just i like to have more options you know so I agree with you. Yeah. A gladiator kind of seems like a better idea. Um, who knows? You know, I might end up going in that direction or maybe changing something into uh, a base retaliator and picking up the modules in game, you know, uh, for a stealth bomber, depending on what they do with the retaliator, if they give it, give it the love that it needs. By the way, uh, I have some ideas in that direction, CIG, if you're listening. All right, now the next comment is from Neoonix. It's a bit of a long one, but he does actually give me uh, permission to uh, kind of, gl you know, kind of just glance over it and uh, pick out the important parts. So we're just going to quickly uh, do that. Now, one of the things that he mentions is that he likes the idea of, you know, different torpedo types and uh, would like to hear more about, you know, system disrupting torpedoes. So to give you a, uh, an example, like an ion torpedo, I believe would be the Star Wars equivalent. We, you know, when they disable that Star Destroyer in Rogue One, that sort of thing. Uh, I always thought it was ion cannons, but I guess it was torpedoes in that movie. Um, yeah, because, with, you know, the... the uh, n neither here nor there. Th those, those things are supposed to carry proton torpedoes, but whatever. Neither here nor there. Um, yeah, system disrupting torpedoes to make a ship, you know, ripe for, you know, kind of boarding and, and stuff like that. I think that it would be cool if we got more in-depth information along those lines. Like, just kind of a broad overview, overview of all the different weapon types that we're going to have. 
a broad overview of all the different types of electronic warfare that we're going to have. And, uh, you know, he goes on to kind of say, you know, I like about the classifications, military, civilian, all of that type stuff. And, you know, part ratings, you know, quality ratings of the parts on the ships. And they would, you know, he would like to see all this information uh, reflected for every ship in the game. And, you know, going back retroactively to the ships that have already been sold. I personally would love to have that kind of in-depth information. And that has always been, um, I think to a certain degree, uh, one of my gripes with uh, the maintenance of the uh, RSI website is that the information, you know, so often, you know, people will quote something from a write-up of a ship and says, oh, it's, it's got size three torpedoes on this ship, you know, uh, you know, how much and it's like oh no no those aren't size three torpedoes anymore we changed that months ago or no no we're on a different size system so it doesn't actually have all those cubic meters of space in it it's actually different now maintain the website please please maintain the fucking website okay like this has been one of my biggest gripes is that you always go and you try to look for information so you can kind of sit there and you kind of you can kind of visualize and imagine okay so these could be two differences and you know it kind of goes back to what i was talking about you know people keeping zero dollar ccus you know everyone's trying to make these defensive plays so if this ship sucks then i can just move over to that ship and vice versa you know and because there's a lot of information that we don't know and a lot of that is kind of based on the fact that this foundation of information that we're kind of going off when we look at all these ships, it's always out of date. It's, you know, this doesn't reflect that, doesn't reflect these changes, doesn't reflect the changes that Chris mentioned in uh, uh, 10 for the Chairman. Is it is it really so impossible to just have a database with all these values and then just to apply different modifiers when you change those values, you know, and just say, Oh, you know what? Chris wants to have smaller numbers for CCUs. So, you know, overall the, you know, the cargo space is going to be this, you know, the, the same, but it's going to be a smaller number. So instead of having a times five multiplier on all the CCU values, we're just going to take them down to a times one multiplier or times two, and then just put that value in the table and boom, 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 boom. they all change. Is it really that hard to do something like that? You know? I mean, you, we've got, uh, we've got spectrum, we've got all this shit, but we don't have anybody who knows how to use Excel. All right, next up, Barney Granero. I think CIG have got the Eclipse just right. Although I hope that the medium sized ships like the Caterpillar will be able to outrun those size nine torpedoes. Otherwise, the Eclipse will be overpowered. And he goes on to elaborate in the sub comments that he's more worried about like say, uh, bounty hunter and he, in an eclipse being able to shoot down a pirate caterpillar with those torpedoes without the caterpillar being able to uh, you know raise the alarm or defend itself um, realistically with piracy in larger capital ships I think it's going to be more a question of tactics and doctrine uh, than it's going to be outright defense against things like that because when you think about piracy um you, one of the things you have to think about is like if you look at ships like the Herald, ships like the Cutlass, and whatever pirate fighter, be it you know the straight up pirate fighter, the Buccaneer, or anything else you know used as a pirate fighter, Hornet or whatever. If you have a roving band of these guys going around and capturing the ships that they can capture, you know the Cutlass moves in, you know the troops assault the ship, kill the crew or whatever. Um, and generally leave the ship derelict in space and you know you've got the herald there jamming any distress signal so no one knows what's going on and then the pirates after they do that they you know the herald stops jamming and they start to leave and just as they're leaving a caterpillar shows up or a reclaimer shows up and goes hey free salvage and starts to salvage everything that's on that ship you know so at that point if that ship were to get attacked, that ship technically hasn't committed a criminal act. So they could raise, they could then raise the alarm and say, I've been attacked by this bounty hunter. 
Oh my, oh my God. Uh oh. And then that bounty hunter would technically become a criminal because they're attacking someone who hasn't committed a criminal act. Right. And so I think with piracy and the larger ships, it's going to be a more, be more about, you know, tactics, doctrine, learning to game the system. And, you know, that's going to be kind of the balancing point for, you know, if you want to pirate in larger ships or using larger platforms. And so most pirates will probably have kind of an alternate throwaway character who is going to uh, eat up all the legal troubles while the main character kind of profits, you know, and which character they play, I guess, will depend on the uh, situation. All right, next up, Will Brown. Ultimately, I think that this ship is just way too expensive for the niche role it fills. It's not tough enough, fast enough, or maneuver maneuverable enough to justify the price tag. I would think that $225 is about as much as I would pay for the ship, even if I wanted to play that role in the game. Of course, you know, we're talking about the Eclipse. Um, maybe even as low as $200, but not $275. That's ridiculous. Um, agreed. Agreed. I like, and that's kind of the difficulty there. I look at it and I say that's you know for what it is. It's a fantastic ship, absolutely fantastic. I really have no real big problems with it except the price tag. Now, if if it could do one more thing, just one more thing, if you could just take that torpedo bay out and replace it with something else, like an E War module. Or something just if it could do one other thing you know I think prior to the sale when it w when all we saw was the you know, the outline under the blanket I said you know just show me something original show me something cool with this ship and you know it's it's a stealth bomber and it's an awesome stealth bomber but that's all that it is it's just it, it and every time people said can I do this with it can I do that that with it no it's a bomber no it's a bomber no it's a bomber <laughs> well you know, unfortunately, you know, whenever I wrestle with the question of do I want one, I still come up with, yeah, but it's only a bomber, you know, and that's a lot of money for only a bomber. And then I look at a retaliator or a gladiator and I go, so many more possibilities. All right, next up, Zenair Zulu. With more than a few short range fighters, some kind of small poor man space carrier is needed. Most likely converted in industry ship. The military would not want underpowered carrier too too much risk, but others may be pirate ship builder or aliens come on CIG, no more pocket carrier hate, and stealth packs will add survivability to smaller independent cargo runners or smugglers. Now the small carrier idea, now it's odd that you should mention Now say hello to the Anvil Crucible, you know, the ship that uh, as of yet does not appear on any production schedule. Sold and then forgotten. Um, if you look at the front of the ship down there on the bottom right, you know, it's kind of closed off and all that. But if you look at the back, you have this kind of landing bay area. But what I would suggest with a ship like this is um, go big or go home. What they should have done with this ship is cut the front right out of it, open that up, and then put another like repair bay style idea out in towards the front of the ship and then allow you to carry say up to six fighters or maybe more you know snub fighters on that and let that thing double up as a carrier you could add modules underneath those components to store fuel ammunition and possibly a very smart spartan crew quarters i mean even that whole command deck area it, it's like you know almost like an aircraft control tower so it would be perfect for the application i think it would be an awesome way to maybe militarize the crucible and to make that pocket carrier which with all of these ships it just seems more and more like it is actually needed in the game it is something that a lot of people have looked for now of course there's well there's the idris or you know there's the javelin well the Javelin, maybe not so much. It it can only carry so much in the Idris. I don't know. I mean, you know, at one point the Idris was three ships and now it's six ships or something like that. I don't know. I don't own an Idris, so I don't, you know, I, I don't follow it as closely as I should. But 
you know, a ship like this in a, at a much more reasonable price point, I mean, especially if it doesn't have, like, ridiculous offensive weaponry or anything like that, if it's more or less just an industrial ship that can double up as a little pocket carrier, I think that makes sense in the universe, and it's something that we should have. But as to why we don't have it, I have no idea. I, I really, I really, really don't. If, you know... This should have been the pocket carrier. It's it's perfect for the application. It just needs some minor changes to the hull, and it would work. So I don't know why it was. This was never made a thing. This was the golden opportunity right here to do that and to kill two birds with one stone. You know, but I don't know. That's what. It, if I was there, if I was the one making the decisions, that's what I would have done. And there would be a pocket carrier in game. I think I actually made a video where I argued about that once, and I argued that that should be a thing at one point. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to realize now that I've made so many videos about Star Citizen. So, the, like, they all start to kind of blend in together. But I'm pretty sure I made a video about that some time ago. All right, next up, Alan Dab. There was a previous ATB where they, CIG, demonstrated the cross-section value to be dynamic. I don't know if anything has changed since then. Um, I'm... I'm not sure because I don't re recall that, but I would wonder, is it dynamic as in terms of the positioning of the ship or is it dynamic relative to the components on the ship and to what state they're in? That, um, that would be a question. I mean, if, if it is down to positioning, like if you're facing from the front, you know, you're not going to see an eclipse at that easily. Whereas if you're below it or above it, you might see it, you know, have, have a much easier time detecting it. You know, that would be cool, but that would be a remarkable amount of depth and a remarkable, you know, just an added layer of information that needs to move back and forth and more work for the servers to do on the back end to make that system, you know, workable and playable. All right, Istvan56, Minion Soldier. The latest jump point has an article on Ascension Astro, a civilian-oriented stealth component manufacturer for the rich and famous. They were taking 870 or 890 jumps uh, and making them stealthy enough to avoid not only pirates but paparazzi. So I think you can lower the signature quite a bit on all ships but still run the risk of a good scanning ship picking you up where average ships won't. So if you wondered on changing components on your tally, you, you'd work ev everywhere, except you'd still fail to lower the tally signature and its cross-sectional readings. Remember, there are three methods of missile lock, which are the same methods of detection for most ships, EM, IR, and cross-sectional density, i.e. radar return. You you turn off systems you can lower your em and ir but the last one you can't change and that's it has to be structurally in the ship for the ghost the cross section cross sectional density is reduced by the composite honeycombed armor which absorbs and diffuses the ship's radar return to be much smaller the same with the saber and the eclipse but the bomber also uses angles like the f-117 nighthawk and subsequent stealth aircraft to uh deflect the radar waves so that they don't bounce back to the radar source the duct work on the thrusters and also the vectors also vectors it to mask the ir signature if you look at the ship matrix page when they added the eclipse they rated the individual stealth components as either b's or c's meaning there's room for improvement and customization yeah so well that was a long one but yeah, that is um, that is interesting. Now, cross the like, cross sectional density, and when you're looking at something like that, that's something you can mask by more or less hiding behind something like an asteroid or something like that. Because once again, to a certain degree, that would be like a line of sight detection. You you bounce a radar wave out and it bounces back. But if there's something in the way, you don't get a return, right? So once again, that would be depth and skill and all kinds of cool shit like that. So I would, I would be down with something like that. And just in general, stealth modules, I think, uh, would be, you know, would be something awesome. And I would love to see them and uh, be able to play with them right now. But yeah, cross section, you just can't change. But, you know, there are ways around it if you, if the situation allows for it and if you know what to do, or at least I would assume so. 
The Canadian will. Hello again. Uh, they actually said the Harbinger and the Gladiator are more maneuverable to put in, in perspective. So more maneuverable than the Eclipse. The Harbinger would be more maneuverable than the Eclipse. That That's kind of a shocker, but... Then again, I guess maybe it could be down to it, you know, having very minimal thrusters because those might actually add to uh, the detectability of the ship if its maneuvering thrusters were too efficient. So you, I guess if you're flying the ship, you really have to be on your toes and know what you're doing if you're flying an eclipse. All right, Sam Anderson, wonder if I get military grade thruster and engines Will will it run faster for my caterpillar? Why not go all the way to competition? Racing caterpillars, caterpillar races. Oh my God, that could that could be a thing. Caterpillar stock car races like NASCAR. That would be that would be pretty awesome. All right, zero H. This is so annoying. It has no defense whatsoever. Once again, we're talking about the eclipse, uh, and has one role, right? Why would this ship not be fast and streamlined? Uh, if this is some slow piece of shit and it takes 15 to 20 seconds to lock on, fuck, I am mad. Um, well, I think that what they're aiming for is not so much, you know, s sort of like a fast kind of, you know, fly by the seat of your pants gameplay. I think what they're looking for is more the lurker type gameplay where you're kind of moving in slowly and you know just kind of waiting for that perfect opportunity if that is indeed the lock on time 15 to 20 seconds you know that's that that could expose you to some real danger with a ship like that i don't know it's it's going to be really tough to tell um we, we're going to have to wait until the ship is in game to make any kind of real final pronouncements as to the quality of the ship but i you know i can kind of see because it does have so much punching power how it could be uh like a real danger to ships you know larger industrial ships but i don't know well ha obviously they're gonna do so they're gonna do multiple balance passes before this game is quote unquote live and losses start to really count in the game and of course, we haven't seen this ship, um, you know, we haven't seen the ship in game yet, and we're likely not going to see it for a year, year and a half at the, you know, at the least. So there's plenty of time to kind of have these debates on the forums and, you know, ask questions. And, you know, once again, once we have something workable and we can put our hands on it, then we'll have a much better idea of what, if anything, needs to be changed. Um, Mr. Vey or Marvey. Um, for its size, I think it will have a very good scanner system plus stealth equals fun scout with mega bombs, lol. Only time will tell if it was money well spent or not. Great vid, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's once again, yeah, only time will tell uh, on this ship. But, you know, for me personally, once again, it was that price tag that kind of, you know, pushed me away from it. Because initially when I saw it, I was like, that's totally... That's, you know, I, I've gone on and on and on about stealth gameplay and how much I love it. But when I saw that price tag and that that narrow laser focus on bomber, bomber, bomber. But can it do this? No bomber. You know, but can it also do... No, it's a bomber. What if I want to... No, it's a bomber. You know, it's just that. It just kind of, like, backed me away from it and made me kind of go, huh, retaliator. All right, Commander Hawk 22. On one hand, I'm looking forward to seeing this in game. I will buy one, maybe two now with LTI as I love the look and I've actually hoped that they would add a stealth bomber. So, or sorry. Also, I am hoping they will include nukes in game. I kind of don't think that that's going to happen. <laughs> it's weapons of mass destruction. That would, <laughs> that would be very, very difficult to balance. Um, but on the other hand, with the new rotating torp system they showed, it is very different from what they started out with. I don't want to launch one torp at a time. I want to send them off all at once and GTFO because you're going to be visible when you launch these things and being stick flying in a straight line while being visible on radar for four to five seconds in a ship that 
whose only defense is not being seen as stupid as hell. We don't even ha do that in real life. Um, so I do, you know, I do understand your point about firing them only one at a time. Um, time will tell. I mean, we don't know how quickly that drum system is going to punch the torpedoes out, right? We don't know how quickly it's just going to, uh, you know, it could be like boom, boom, boom. Or it could be like click, drop, click, drop. You know, it it's very difficult to tell. But with a ship like this, when I'm looking at it, I'm seeing it more as part of like an overall combined arms strategy rather than just like strictly this ship on its own doing its thing. So it's, I think it's going to be more a question of you have your main force making the enemy look this way and then these ships, you know, these eclipses come in from the other direction and by the time the enemy realizes what's going on it's too late and there's already torpedoes in the air and it's more of like multiple eclipses doing something like that. When I look at it, so like when I'm looking at it from a balanced perspective, I'm seeing it as more of like a combined arms thing than just a solo player using the ship which I think probably won't be the most viable way to play a ship like this. If, if I were like dead set on getting this ship, like if this ship was like my reason for being in my only one ship in the game, I would be out looking for the corps that have like a dedicated stealth wing and who are that organized and looking at something like that or the organizations rather. That's who I'd be looking at if I was focused on something like this so I could get the best use out of that ship possible. Um, Maurice McRae. Any truth to Squadron 42 released officially 2018? Probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Squadron 42, uh, if I was going to bet my money on it, I would say 2018 for the full product. Um, I, unless there's some kind of mega like bomb drop coming with uh, Citizen Con in October. I don't think that we're going to see uh, Squadron 42 this year. I would uh, probably going to see maybe like a little mini mission pack, you know, like here's a little snippet of what you're going to get just to tide people over. But overall, um, I don't think that we're going to see Squadron 42 this year. I would bet against it if I were to bet my own money. So anyways, uh, that's the show for this week. Thank you all for your questions, comments, uh, likes and dislikes and all, all of that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show and thanks for watching. But um, just quickly um, to address the, because like, I've gotten a few questions so like, was I ever going to do another WoW video? Um, probably not in the immediate future. It's probably going to be more once I get that achievement on lockdown and I get that transmog, I might, uh, I might bring out a uh, Demon Hunter tank and uh, make some fun videos with that, but only in such a way that it wouldn't interfere with any of the Star Citizen videos that I'm already making, right? So that would just be like a fun side project, but yeah, if it's going to happen, it probably won't happen again for two to three weeks, probably would be the safe bet, so yeah we'll know more when we know more anyways i hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching Autumn travel initiated